Welcome to worship from Nutsford Methodist Church, KMC, as we begin our worship for our farewell service in the Alderley Edge and Nutsford circuit. As part of our worship, we'll be receiving greetings from some friends who've shared in worship here in our circuit over the last eight years. But we want this to be a real celebration of all that we've shared and experienced together and also something that really brings glory to God. So we begin with a word of prayer as I light the circuit prayer candle, as we think of the different churches of our circuit, our prayer is that we might be Christ-centered and spirit-led. After our worship, there will be fellowship in the Zoom coffee lounge, and then also in a telephone conference. Let's pray. Creator God, we thank you for the privilege that we have of worshipping you in the comfort of our own homes. We pray now that wherever we are, we might know your presence with us. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Almighty God, who breathed life into creation, we praise you for the wonder of this day, for the blessings you give us, and your promise to be with us at all times. We praise you, faithful God, for the steadfast love new every morning, which has always guided us, for the promise which has never faltered, for the light which has lightened our way, for the story which has reminded us of those who came before us. God, awaken us anew to your truth and your light. Gathered in your name, in church and homes, finding ways of sharing so recently discovered, thank you for those with whom we worship together, for those with whom we pray together, for those in whose company we have listened to your voice and sought to see you face to face. We give thanks for Rob's call to ministry and his commitment in following Jesus and his service to this circuit and community and for Carol's support in the tasks to which they were called and fulfilled among us 
through the power of your Holy Spirit. As we celebrate today, may we know ourselves blessed, safe in the knowledge that their path of faith is unbroken as they move on to new challenges, new visions. May we, in thankfulness, throw blessings anew as we seek to make our world, our circuit and our communities beacons of hope, realised in our serving you by serving one another. Lord, as you confront us in the mundane with signs of the divine, may we raise our thanks to you. Your kingdom come, your will be done, O God. Amen. Hello everybody, I'm so privileged to be able to do this from the States, sending my love and appreciation to Rob and Carol. You know, I've known many people in ministry, people that have challenged me, people that have taught me. Rob and Carol are a couple that inspire me. Their love for Jesus is infectious. Their servant heart is amazing. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for teaching me and showing me what it really means to love Jesus, to reach out to those people in your neighborhood and in your community, to make a difference, to shine his light in darkness. God bless you, my friend. Much blessings. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to wish you all the very best with your move to Wakefield. I've got very fond memories of time spent with you in, in Nutsford coming up for celebration events. I wish you and Carol God's blessing as you make that move to, to Wakefield. May his kingdom be furthered in that area, in that region, in unique and fresh ways through your ministry. And so it's a delight for me to be able to send greetings from the other end of the earth. It's middle of the winter here. It's actually cold uh, here in Australia at this point in time. But I want to send greetings to say what a marvellous ministry you've had in many, many places. It's great to recognise that ministry that yourself and Carol have had. And Carol and I send our love to you. And we also send our love to those receiving you in a new setting. But they're receiving a gift, a gift from God that I know will be a blessing. I've chosen to come out here in the city centre because it's important that our ministry is here. And I know you've written a book about the, the whole business of being involved in ministry in the town centre. And where it is you're going to, we'll have lots of different town centres in that circuit. And my prayer is that that is a great blessing to them as well as to you. So we send you our very, very sincere personal greetings at this time. Wishing you well as you move to a new place, as you move into a new ministry and that people will feel a sense of, of receiving that gift that God is giving to them. And I'm delighted to be able to send greetings to you and to the ministry that you're about to share. Carol, you're a wonderful person at home, and when they receive uh, Rob in ministry, they receive a wonderful gift in you too. God bless you. Really, really enjoy the ministry that lies ahead of you. God bless you. Our New Testament reading is from 2 Timothy chapters 1, verses 3 to 12. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Louise, and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of the hands of hands. For God did not give you a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our own purposes and grace. 
This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know that the one in whom I put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until the day what I have entrusted to him. Rob and Carol, on behalf of KMC, we thank you for your love and your leadership over the last eight years. And as a token of our love and affection, we'd like to give you this KMC memory book. We hope you enjoy looking at it and remembering the special times that we've spent with us. And as you go to Wakefield, we ask God's blessing on your ministry. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my great pleasure to minister alongside Rob and the, and the staff at Nutsford United Methodist Church. My great pleasure to do so, and I was deeply blessed by that experience. Um, I have memories in that minister, time of ministry that I will hold close to my heart um, for the rest of my days. So thank you, uh, KMC. Thank you, Pastor Rob and Carol, for your great hospitality. Uh, and for your wonderful ministry in the town of Nutsford. I'm praying that God will deeply bless you in all that you undertake. Thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Hello, Rob. This is me, Pam Rhodes, just wishing you well as I hear you're now leaving Nutsford after so many years to go to Pastures New. You'll remember that I met you and members of the congregation on that wonderful trip to the Holy Land that we shared. And of course, great friendships are forged in situations like that. And not long ago, I came and spent an evening of worshipping and uh, singing lots of hymns together with your congregation. And I was struck then at just what a great atmosphere there is. They're live they're caring, they're loving, they're very active, they're inspirational and they have a real sense of family about them and I know that you will create that feel in whatever church you are next placed. So I do wish you well and I just ask that God will bless you in whatever comes your way in the future. And please can that be me? Can I come and see you in your new church? Keep in touch. Bye now. Well, Carol and Rob and the good people of Knutsford, Greetings to you all from Truro in Cornwall and uh, we're all sorry that we can't be present because of this horrible virus that we've got but I am very very pleased to be able to say something today because this is an important day and it's very important to say thank you and it's right that we should have a thankful heart on this special day and that is my message. It is one of real thankfulness Carol and Rob and I want to put you both in this category when we're saying thanks because you have both been important and God has used you both in some wonderful wonderful ways it's been a really special ministry in nuts so there's just one final word from our founder yes I'd just like to say <laughs> I'm pleased I am with all that you've been doing and may God bless you in the future I thought to make a change from Clarence the Frog <laughs> God bless. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. Oh. Hiya, Rob and Carol, and all who are part of this very special farewell service today. Uh, forgive me for wearing my official LFC mask. 
as we're all uh, uh, encouraged to wear face coverings these days for large gatherings such as this. Um, it's an exciting time to be uh, a Liverpool fan. Um, good to be able to spend a little bit of time with you and thank you so much for the invitation to preach at your leaving service. I hope you're not beginning to regret it already. <laughs> um, I chose a reading from 2 Timothy, Paul encouraging his uh, younger partner in the gospel, Timothy. Uh, I'm reminding him of his call to ministry. And I thought for us, uh, Rob and Carol and the family, uh, for us as a, a circuit gathered to say farewell to Rob and to Carol, there are some important things in this passage. I'm going to pick up uh, thankfulness. I'm going to pick up the, the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to pick up testimony and then uh, a final commitment. Uh, so first of all, in this uh, in this portion of 2 Timothy, Paul begins, as he does in many of his letters, by talking of thankfulness. When I think of you, uh, he says, I thank God without ceasing. And he calls to mind, particularly, he says, your genuine faith. Well, on behalf of all who are watching and participating in this worship this afternoon, uh, Rob and Carol, uh, we do thank God for you. And we do thank God for you continually. I personally thank God for you and uh, the ministries that we've shared in together through Easter people, um, being on stage platform together at Easter people, sharing the platform at Summer Fire and Firefest and uh, having the opportunity to, to come to Nutsford a few times with Firefest has been very, very special for me. And of course, uh, an amazing uh, Bible fresh year with all sorts of opportunities, not least uh, visiting the Holy Land together. I have every reason to be thankful for you and your genuine faith. It impacts my faith. It builds me up. It encourages me. And there'll be lots of people participating and enjoying this worship this afternoon who have thankfulness in their hearts for your ministry, both of you, Carol and Rob, at Nutsford and across the whole circuit as you've led the circuit. Uh, your genuine faith shines through. You are true ambassadors for Christ and we do thank God for you. At the end of that fat thankfulness, Paul says these words, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands might remind us of our ordinations, Rob, where uh, holy hands were laid upon us. But, but it might remind us of many times when we've laid hands on people to pray for healing, for the coming of the Spirit in membership and all sorts of uh, moments like that, baptism, renewal of baptism. Uh, stir up the gift of God, Carol and Rob, as you go to a new place, stir up that gift of God that is in you, which we can all see shines through you. I think we've been living through a stirring up time, haven't we? Um, things have never been like this before. We've never had to learn to worship online together or to stay in touch with each other without physically being able to be present with each other. Learning to be church without going to church, a church without walls. Some of us have found that quite exciting. Some of us have found it quite frustrating. Uh, it has been a time when we've been stirred up. Well, Rob Carroll, we pray that God is stirring up that gift in you for a new place, for a new time, for a new ministry. And uh, I pray that for all of us, uh, minister, ministers coming going is a time of change. Uh, as we emerge from this pandemic, what shape is the church going to be in? Everything's going to feel different for quite a long time. It's being stirred up in us. Seek God continually. What is the gift that he's given to us for this time? He then goes on to say from thankfulness to what do we take with us when we're traveling, when we're out and about? What do we have? Paul says we don't have a spirit of fear. We shouldn't be anxious about anything. We shouldn't fear the changes. We shouldn't fear the move that's coming. Um, we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of three things. Okay, a spirit of power or strength. The Greek word you probably know is dunamis where we get dynamite from, or dynamism, or dynamo. He's given us an energy um, that comes from the Holy Spirit, not timidity, but power 
and strength. Remember that. Secondly, he's given us a spirit of love. That's the Greek word. We know agape, which is a very divine love, love divine or love's excelling, a faithful uh, love, loving kindness, if you like. The Old Testament chesed that we may have studied a lot in the book of Ruth, for example, God's loving kindness that endures forever and ever, the spirit of power, spirit of love. The third word is interesting. It's translated in the New King James Version as uh, a sound mind. Rob, he's given you a sound mind. Some of us might wonder about that at times, <laughs> and Carol particularly. <laughs> but um, it's a difficult word to translate. It perhaps means a strong sense of wholeness or well-being, keeping your head together. Um, it might mean determination, not giving up, and resilience. Um, so put those three things together, God's power, God's love, and they always are in, uh, in balance with each other, God's power, God's love, and his well-being for our minds. It's about mental health as well as physical and spiritual and emotional health. God has given us all of that if we just open ourselves up to the more of him and ask today, give me more of your strength, Lord. Give me more of your love, Lord. Give me more of your shalom, your well-being, soundness of mind and body and spirit. Keep us safe and well. Those are things that God gives us. Next, Paul goes on to talk about not being ashamed of who we are and what we are in Christ. And um, when we go to a new place, sometimes we're thinking, am, am I going to fit in? Are they going to like me? Is this a good match? Who will I be for these people? Um, and advice I've always been given in ministry is just be yourself. Sometimes people might regret having said that to me, but just be yourself. And we would say to you, Carol and Rob, be yourselves. We love you for who you are. And God loves you even more for who you are. So Paul says, don't be ashamed of the testimony that you have, that you are saved, that you've been called and it's a holy calling. And that one of the things that Rob and I share in common, a, a real passion for holiness, uh, social holiness, scriptural holiness, hence our involvement with the Southport Methodist Holiness Convention over many years now, um, Firefest. We are saved and we are called to holy living. Um, much of your testimony, Rob, you've written in your great book, hope on the main street and if people haven't got a copy of that book then they should get one before you leave um, because it's full of testimony the stories of uh, God at work in your life throughout your life in all the encounters that, that we've had don't be ashamed of your testimony the stories that you have to tell of God's goodness God's greatness not according to our works it's not about us so St Paul but according to his purpose and his grace in Jesus Christ who lived died and rose again it's all about him and it's all for his glory but we take with us our testimony our stories of faith and many of us who are watching this worship to, to, today this afternoon have stories of faith that are as a result of time with Rob and Carol You've encouraged our faith. You've helped to grow our faith. Um, you've discipled us. You've been with us in the ups and downs of life. And our stories are woven together. And Rob and Carol, we thank you so much for that. Uh, final thing that I'm going to say is uh, as Paul finishes this amazing passage of scripture, and I do commend it to you, three, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 12. It's, it packs a punch and it reminds us who we are in God. Paul finishes this by saying, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. We make all sorts of commitments in our lives as Methodists. Every year we say, I'm no longer my own, but yours, Lord, put me to what you will. In ordination, Rob, myself, others um, have made specific commitments uh, in a sense of uh, a Methodist covenant prayer plus plus. I'll go wherever you send me, Lord. I'll do whatever you call me to do. Um, the calling of ordination. Uh, but also for us as supporters of Rob and Carol, uh, as pilgrims along the way, as we prepare to wave them off onto a new path and a new ministry, uh, we commit them uh, to the Lord. And we know who we've believed in. 
and we are persuaded that he is able to keep what we've committed. That might be about our ministry and our, our walk with God, but it might also be those we pray for. God is able to keep what and who we've committed to him until that day. Some of us today will make a commitment to ourselves to pray for you, Carol and Rob, as you journey from us, uh, from this circuit. So thankful for all that you've given and all that you've done, filled with the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, saved and called, a holy calling. We commit you as a couple, as the Cotton family, we commit you to the Lord. And we know who we've believed and we're persuaded that he is able to keep what we've committed until that day. There was a day in 2011 when we were in the Holy Land. Rob and I, in a coach, he tells this story very well in his book, where um, the coach had to stop at the checkpoint between Bethlehem and Jerusalem. And two very, very young, I mean, they look like teenagers, young guards got on the coach and rightfully asked if they could see our passports. Rob and I were right at the front of the coach leading this uh, wonderful trip to the Holy Land, which was full of amazing adventures. Remember uh, celebrating birthdays there, renewal of baptisms there, amazing. And uh, these two young uh, soldiers came onto the coach with guns and checked our passports. And when they saw that we were UK citizens, uh, the young man, it was a young man and a young, one, young man, man looked at us and said, oh, UK. Manchester United, which was totally the wrong thing to say to me. I had a rucksack on my back that had a Liverpool logo on it. So I said, <laughs> Manchester United, Liverpool, at which point he grabbed his gun and um, demanded that I, I, I left the coach. I, Rob would, went pale. Rob went pale. He thought he was about to lose his co-leader uh, and maybe friend. Um, he could picture me being taken off the coach and led away and uh, maybe being arrested, maybe in, being shot, who knows. Um, it was an interesting moment, wasn't it, Rob? Uh, we don't have a spirit of fear. We have a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I know whom I've believed. I'm persuaded he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. Rob and Carol, do remember you'll never walk alone. God is with you. We are so grateful for your ministry. Personally, at Nutsford Methodist Church, in all the churches of the circuit, in the new work that you've begun, the church planting and the pioneering, uh, in all of these things, we pray God's richest blessings upon you. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. God is able to keep what we have committed to him until that day when we see him face to face, when we cast our crowns before him, full of wonder, love and praise. God bless you. Amen. As a circuit, we all know the value of prayer and mission. And we are so grateful for Rob and his leadership and thank the Lord for many things he's brought to this um, circuit, including the vision of Sax House Kingdom Community as birthed by Rob a couple of years ago. We thank the Lord that he's continued to work in and through both Rob and Zax to pray, partner and participate in the Kingdom of God and we appreciate the Lord's direction for us all and those in Zach's. As Rob and Carol move to Wakefield, we pray that God would continue to bring hope in the mainstream, pardon the pun for his book, both there and here, and that we would see your kingdom come, both in Nutsford, Northwich, Wakefield and beyond. 
We pray for the worldwide church for unity that we may be a sign of God's light and goodness in our world. We pray for those who suffer for the sake of Christ that God will confirm his people and strengthen them in love. We pray for our own country. We pray for the Queen, for the Prime Minister, the government and all those who have authority and influence. We pray that they may serve us all in wisdom and that they will be honest and compassionate. We pray for all those who are hungry, both in our own community and around the world. May God grant them hope and strength, and we pray that one day no one will live in poverty. We pray for the towns and the villages within our circuit, for the doctors, the nurses, the teachers and the farmers, and all who are key to making every day so special. O oh Lord, continue to grant us the courage and the love to reach out to our neighbours, giving them hope for the future. We pray for all those who fear for the future. For those who are concerned about employment. For students awaiting exam results. We pray also for those who are worried about health. And we also pray for those who were recently bereaved. Comfort them, O oh Lord. We pray for families, for grandparents, parents and children. We pray for those whose families live far away, for those who feel isolated and alone, for those who feel imprisoned, that they may know your presence. We pray for our church leaders. We pray for those who are moving on taking on new ministerial duties in our churches across our nation. We pray for Rob and Carol. We pray as they seek God's favour. We pray for their move to Wayfield. Bless them, O oh Lord, we pray. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'm using the modern English form, but please feel free to use whatever form or language you feel most comfortable with. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Okay, so Rob and Carol, it's hard to believe it's that time, um, and we wanted to give you something that could symbolize not just that you're going on to something else, but that you'll still be here, because the work you've done just continues, you've built your life into that church, and at the same time, to remind you that you're going and we're coming with, right, because we'll be praying for you and we'll always be in each other's hearts, so um, as you guys spoke about the, the joy of having pictures of churches, the circuit commissioned something, and so I'll leave it to Natalie to um, do what she does best. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. oh Natalie, that's fantastic! <laughs> oh, that's super, thank you so much. Lovely little watercolour, um, and we were up at the church trying to take photographs. Eventually, we stole one off Google Earth. Um, <laughs> it's very hard to get a picture of the church straight on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, just oh, thank you so lovely. much. Thank, um, you. thank you. And perhaps we can just say a blessing on you guys. Please. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift that Rob and Carol are to us. Not word to us, are. Because they have touched so many lives and put their, their blood, sweat, and tears into this church as a gift to you and a gift to us. And we pray a blessing on them that they would be received with the same love at Sandal and bring their same heart to the ministry there. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Rob and Carol, on behalf of Blumley Methodist Church, I'd like to present you with a memento. We've so enjoyed having the time with you as our minister and his wife. Uh, it's not been long enough, 
but um, you've been so good with us, not just preaching on a regular basis, but also you've come to all our special occasions, our socials, including coffee mornings and everything, and you've made everybody in the village feel so welcome, and so we do thank you on our behalf. Uh, we shall miss you greatly, but we won't forget you. So we hope that you'll find somewhere for that in your new home. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely. Thank you very much. Gordon Wilkinson. Yes. Is this the the um, the one that was uh, done some time ago? Yes, that's right. He's the, the one that's in actually in the church. He's redone it. Yes. Oh, he's redone it. Oh, yes, yes. It's, uh, uh, he spent lockdown doing it for us. Yes. Managed to ask him if he'd do it, and he got it framed locally as well. So It's so lovely. It's such a lovely church, isn't it? It's so beautiful. Thank you. So many happy memories as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a, what a weird day this is, just to uh, come to you and say thank you really for the last eight years that Rob and I have shared with you. Um, I could fill hours up if I went through everything that we've experienced with you. There have been so many high points, um, but I think I want to just say thank you for the friendship, the fellowship and the fun that we've shared. I'm sitting in room six. It's not completed yet, which is really sad. I was hoping to see it completed before um, we moved. Um, but such a special memory of working with the young people to get room six ready. Um, but loads of memories, loads of memories. And they're all good. So thank you so much. And a massive thank you to all of you from both of us for the wonderful cards, letters, gifts, uh, that we've received from the church and circuit. Uh, we're so grateful um, and we just send you our love and God's blessing into the future. Thank you. Well, I just want to add my 
personal thanks to those of Carol as we say thank you for all that we shared together in the last eight years. I'm tempted to use a football analogy from 1966 when I say uh, they think it's all over. It is now. A prayer of blessing from Ephesians and chapter 3. I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love, so that you, together with all God's people, may have the power to understand how broad and long, how high and deep is Christ's love. Yes, may you come to know his love, although it can never be fully known, and so be completely filled with the very nature of God. To him, who by means of his power working in us is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or even think of or imagine. To God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time, forever and forever. Amen. This, this is the God we adore, our faithful, unchangeable friend. We'll praise him for all that is past and we'll trust him for all that's to come. Amen.